The search for the next esports star is on as what's known as the minor league of gaming gets ready to launch its first ever all-star tournament. Eric Chami is ready to get his game on back at headquarters with all the details. Hey, Eric. That's right, Melissa. I like that little uh, sound that that little thing made. That was pretty cool. So typically we'd be talking about the NBA draft coming up tonight, but a lot of kids these days, they actually want to go pro as a competitive video game or an esports athlete. This weekend in L.A., Red Bull partnering with a company called Super League Gaming. They're hosting the first ever Red Bull All-Stars Tournament where the four best teams from the company's League of Legends circuit will compete against each other all at once at the same time. Super League Gaming is like the minor leagues for professional esports. It's similar. It's a setup similar to how traditional sports have their minor leagues for up-and-comers. In this case, amateur gamers compete in local and national competitions to give them exposure and a pathway to the pros. They've got competitive tournaments for five different games including League of Legends and Minecraft. Most of the players, college-aged, but they also have tons of high school and middle schoolers. There's even somebody who's seven years old. And note the presence of Red Bull here. Like many other companies, Red Bull has been getting more involved in gaming tournaments and sponsorship deals, working with teams and top personalities. The reason, it's simple, Melissa. That's where so many young people are turning their attention. They're playing video games, or they're simply watching the best players on the main stage. Even at tonight's NBA draft, Many of those top athletes, they're all playing video games in their free time as well. My only last question is, I don't know which one of the traders would be the best gamer. My guess is BK because he's such a crypto guy, and I assume they're correlated. I don't know. Eh, not so much. I, I'm very good at Pong. Is there a contest for that? Maybe there would be a new league for that. <laughs> Eric, thank you. See ya. Eric Chami. For more, let's uh, bring the CEO of Super League Gaming on, Ann Hand. She is leading the charge on building the next generation of esports athletes. Welcome, Ann. Great to have you on Fast Money. Thank you for having me. Have you actually gotten to the point where some of these young people who are playing in, in your competitions are being discovered and going pro? It's a great question because uh, right now the traditional professional esports player peaks at around the age of 21. Now we expect that to change over time, just the same way that Tom Brady's a great quarterback at 40 years old. Uh, but that really is, is why Super League is so necessary to the professional level because we're discovering up and coming talent at 12, 14, 16 years old. And those are really the people that have the potential in the near term to become professional esports athletes. I'm sure there are hundreds, thousands of people trying to compete, trying to go pro. So, what, what's the number one piece of advice you'd give to these young folks who want to be discovered and want to go pro? What should they do? Yeah, it's really the, the whole heart of why Super League was founded. With all of the excitement at the professional level and all of the smart money going in at that level, it was inevitable that feeder systems would have to emerge. And what we saw early on was that the opportunity to wrap team and league structures around this up-and-coming young talent meant that we could actually bring to them some of the other softer skills that are really the difference between a good and a great athlete. You know, you think about... You know, I, I played tennis a lot growing up. I could hit a tennis ball against a garage door and practice the game, but you build character when you join a team. You learn a lot about teamwork and collaboration and leadership. And so the Super League system, we really feel like, is the added piece of really how to foster these kids into becoming great esports athletes. And we have just about 30 seconds, Ann, but, you know, is it not it's not just about being good at minecraft or whatever i mean do you, should you have purple hair should you stand out in other ways dress in a certain way so you can really differentiate yourself yeah i mean look it's like all um other kind of great esports or traditional sports athletes the the backstory the human interest the the stories of the players is a big piece of the valuable content and how you create wonderful fandom but the nice thing for Super League is, is that it really highlights that everybody's a gamer these days and that there's a mainstreaming of gaming. You're not going to grow out of it and that it's a wide psychographic mix. And so there's a place for everyone in the esports ecosystem. I mm -hmm. often say esports are going to make your kids social again. And, um, and the nice thing is, is that whether you're going to become a professional or maybe a broadcaster, an analyst or shoutcaster, it's going to open up a lot of career opportunities. Wow. And thank you. It's fascinating stuff. Anne Hand, uh, the CEO of Super League Gaming. Um, psychographic diversity, Guy. So, I mean, she made <laughs> I that don't up. know why I turned told, you I mean, on I know Anne is going. Psycho, psycho what? Graphic. Diversity. Yeah. It's fantastic. Listen, clearly I am not their target audience. And I, but, you know, my one kid plays these games, so I should probably encourage him. The same way you encourage your son to go out and throw a football or a baseball, Go and play your this? Nintendo Wii and your, your Switch and do those things. Maybe you could be the next Steez 
you don't remember him. Steve's. I do remember yeah. Steve's. Yeah. But the yes. ecosystem that she mentions, sports casting, I mean, all of this is being developed right now. And I'm sure a lot of we're talking about media mergers. The media company is probably looking at this thinking, hey. Yeah, you know, we talked about it last night. It's really place. hard when you think about some of the market caps and the premiums that would need to be paid by some of these media companies to acquire these guys, where a lot of this, if you're going for the esports, is going to be on the come. So to me, you know, it's really hard to think about EA going for 55 or $60 right. billion dollars right now. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.